CIG devs are slowly returning from winter break, and while the official dev news has been a bit slow this holiday season, the Star Citizen leaks are going absolutely bananas. A massive walkthrough video was posted for the long-awaited Idris capital ship, and the scale is frankly stunning. Honestly, it makes me wonder a lot about what the heck massive ships are actually supposed to be like in the Persistent Universe. Let's get into it. So this isn't the first time that we've seen a preview of the Idris interior, but it's the most thorough and updated look of the ship and frankly its scale is insane. Even more so when you consider that the Idris isn't even close to being the biggest capital ship in the game. We know that this ship will be player flyable when Squadron 42 releases, so it's possible that we'll be seeing this in players hands this year. And thanks again to Pipeline for the leak, I'll leave a link to their discord in the description if you're interested in following them for more up to date leaks. Now for the uninitiated Initiated, the Idris is a large military ship. It's one of the smaller capital class ships with lots of turrets, a spinal mounted railgun, depending on the variant, and an impressive hangar bay. Actually, the hangar is a good spot of discussion to begin the video with. In this walkthrough and the single player trailer, the Idris is shown to house about three Gladius light faders within its main hangar bay. But the sheer size of this hangar means that it should be capable of housing much more than just three Gladiuses. Players have packed much smaller ships full of snub fighters, and there seems to be very little stopping people from using this as a full on carrier. Someone showed a video demonstrating that the interior hangar could easily fit 70 plus Fury snub fighters, and that's not even counting what the cargo bay could add to that. So how this ship was intended to be used or displayed to be used in the single player versus how it may actually be used in the multiplayer could be wildly different. But that's just one of the many big ship challenges that CIG will have to face down the road. Now the walkthrough tour starts off showing the bridge, which we have seen before, but we get a nice look at the rear area of the bridge this time, where we see more computer terminals doing spaceshipy stuff. The long stairs leading up to the bridge also are very cool looking, and although they didn't show the windows much, it would probably offer some very nice views as you make your way to and from different stations. In fact, the sheer length and the amount of corridors on this ship means that you're going to have to do some real level memorization just to get around this ship quickly. The tour gives us a nice look at the ship's brig, basically where you store prisoners that you aren't putting into stasis pods. I'm not really sure how this brig is going to be used in the multiplayer universe other than maybe trolling players, but I'm sure this will be a spot for single player interrogations. We then get a cool look at some engineering or technical bays. The aesthetics here remind me a lot of alien ship interiors. There's also some round escape pod bays, which are different from the coffin-like escape pods that we tend to see in the other ships. These are likely multi-crew escape pods, which makes a lot of sense given the crew complement needed to run the ship. In theory, that is. I'm sure that some people are going to find ways to solo an Idris around the verse, but at least from the website, the max crew seems like it could be around 30 players. We then head into a decontamination chamber on the way into the engine room. I'm not sure if this decontamination will actually serve a function in the game. I'm honestly fine if it's just cosmetic for the most part. I'm not sure I'm quite ready for the whole foreign contaminant gameplay loop just yet. Now the engine room looks really cool, but again, we've seen it before. The details are simply fantastic though. We then get a look at the cargo bay. I don't actually think I've personally seen this bay before, and I'm not sure how you actually get access to the cargo bay from the exterior of the ship, but it is quite massive. In fact, the Idris could easily be used as an armed supply ship if the hangar bay was also used for cargo storage, and according to lore, these ships were used by different factions or outfits as transport ships. Now the mess hall also looks cool with a huge crew quarters and a massive sized bathroom. It really does look like a vessel designed for long missions. There's even a cool little lounge area with a tiny Idris model up on the wall. There seems to be some sort of medical type facility next to the crew area, probably just for basic supplies versus say emergency medical treatment. 
Now the tour doesn't take us into the captain's quarters, but the captain and exo quarters are shown next to each other. There's also a missile room, but the player doesn't go in. In fact, there seems to be a few areas of the ship that aren't totally ready yet, as I'd imagine there's probably even a room to, I don't know, maintain the rail gun or the spinal mounted weapons that this ship can be outfitted with. We then get to see a med bay, which is quite large and seems capable of dealing with more than just the Idris's crew, which is kind of cool. The briefing room, is also awesome. It looks like you would expect and gives me very much a Battlestar Galactica vibe. We did get to see this area before, but it still looks really cool and I'm sure it'll be used quite a bit in the single player to prepare you for missions. Then we get a look at the armory and the in-ship shooting range. We saw this a bit in the Squadron 42 trailer with a bit more details added to it there, but nonetheless a shooting range on a spaceship is just so cool. The Idris is designed to be able to land planet side, so who knows if this ship will be used to launch some ground invasions or something like that, but it seems to be equipped to do so if you need to. We then head down for a look at the pilot ready room and the flight control deck. This area looks neat, but it's really just a cosmetic stop off for the real deal. And again, the main hangar area is massive, shown with three gladiuses. The flashing lights and small cosmetic details just really sell the entire scene. And the whole ship feels much more alive, I think, than some of the other ships in the game due to the various lights and flickering and atmospherics. Now, what I don't remember seeing before are these little Argo MPUV bays. These small ships are basically utility ships for different kinds of short range tasks, and they get their own bay, which is dope. I think it connects to the main bay, but I'm not completely sure on how this layout works. We then get to see the gravity generator room, which is pretty large. It looks cool and very sci-fi-y. And finally, the player gets into one of the gladiuses and t does a takeoff demonstration, showing the player loop around the Idris and then landing into the rear opening of the ship. The sequence, frankly, is insanely impressive. I have no doubt that this ship will be absolutely epic for the single player aspect of the game. It does, however, give me a lot of questions about its multiplayer use cases. There's a lot of space in this ship that frankly might not be used that much in the multiplayer world, but it's really hard to know. Endgame or even big ship gameplay has only been loosely talked about and more in a conceptual way. It's hard to imagine players taking advantage of all of these facilities on a regular basis. So at this point, we really just have no idea how practical the interior of this ship will be for multiplayer or how it might get repurposed by players. I'd imagine that we'll see players packing these things full of cargo or even using the cargo bay to store more ships or vehicles depending on how they want to use them. The minimum number of crew needed to achieve a decent combat rating will become a major factor, I would imagine, for multiplayer. The website seems to indicate that it could run with a minimum crew of eight, but I'm sure players will figure figure out different ways to make this effective with even less. The walkthrough is really inspiring and it, it makes me very excited to get one of these in game and fly it around for myself. What do you guys think about this crazy walkthrough? It certainly gives some context as to why some of these massive ships take so long to complete. I can only imagine the Javelin and the Bengal carrier interiors, let alone any of the Vandal ships which simply dwarf the Idris in scale. Now, if you want to hear more about the latest and craziest leak for Star Citizen that actually gives an internal release date for Star Citizen set in 2025, check out this video here. It's pretty wild stuff. Also, drop me a like if you enjoyed this content, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this, and ding that notification bell to help beat the YouTube algorithm with me. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.